Hello, this is FX Screamer. Um, I've never done one of these videos before, but uh, recently I've been taking up drawing again, something I used to do when I was really young, but then like, I don't know, half my life went by and I went into music and then I stopped drawing. But I always wanted to develop character art and I was inspired by, you know, cartoons from the 90s, you know, all the, the early, late 80s, early 90s. Um, and I wanted to learn how to draw, and then I also wanted to learn how to, you know, bump up my production techniques and uh, make it look really nice digitally. And I've always had some, um, I've had some experience in Photoshop doing a lot of web work and like web graphics, but to apply that to drawings, that was something I had to figure out. Uh, I will say, uh, I'm not a professional. <laughs> this is a hobby for me but uh, I have learned a lot over the last few months drawing almost every day and uh, I actually recently had a live stream and someone told me that it was very helpful to them which gave me the idea that hmm maybe I should make a tutorial vid that might help some people out because it's surprisingly simpler than what most people think uh, you think about I see a lot of great artists out there that only draw on pencil and they might take pictures with their phone or at least scan it in but that's all they really know how to do and it's to me it's a tragedy it's like they have this fantastic looking artwork and yet they feel uncomfortable like oh I don't have a tablet or I, I don't understand that stuff um, well I'll say this is a Photoshop based tutorial but the techniques that I'm doing could be applied to many many programs whether you're using paint shop Sci, is that how you say it uh, I think even GIMP uh, there's a couple other programs. Uh, the techniques are all pretty much the same. Now I'm using a Intuos Pro uh, tablet, but you don't need one to do pretty much everything you're about to see because while, like for example, line work. Line work's the thing that scares a lot of people because you think, oh, I absolutely need a tablet for that. Well, in some cases, yes. Uh, there's a lot of techniques I've seen people do, a lot of purists, people that do uh, feathering techniques. Uh, it, you can take a lot of time spending on line work, but for me, I'm after that crisp, tuned, cell shaded, like full production look. And rather than draw the lines, I actually build the lines. And in this tutorial, we are going to be using a lot of the pen tool. And you can actually use a mouse. You can do almost everything I'm doing in this tutorial with a mouse. So don't feel like you're crippled. So if you have a drawing, it doesn't matter if you can scan it in, if you don't have a scanner, take out a camera, take out your cell phone, take a picture, email it to yourself. I've done it. Uh, it works fine. As long as you can get the pencil work into the, the computer, then you're, you're halfway there. Um, I've recently been using Sketchbook Pro for a lot of my, my little drawings. So this is a digital pencil here, so it's not actually scanned in. Um, but that's kind of the way I've been working lately. But uh, without further ado, let's get started. I will try to walk you through the entire process. Um, we're going to do the line work, we're going to do the base color, and then we're going to do uh, shadowing and rim lighting and a couple other little adjustment layer techniques that I've learned from others over the time. Uh, but to start with, this is a character I created a month or two ago. Uh, his name's Enzo and uh, kind of Disney-esque in the way that he looks. Um, looks like he's a handyman, tool man, runs a workshop, invents stuff, kind of a smart ass. But anyway, let's go ahead and break it down here. Uh, when we do Photoshop tutorials, or at least not we, I do, sorry, I'm new at this. <laughs> uh, it's very important to do non-destructive editing. Um, I'm very, very about non-destructive editing. So if you're not working in layers, I strongly suggest you do. Unless you're after that traditional painting uh, where you do a one layer painting, great. But in this tutorial, we are absolutely going to be using layers and clipping masks and opacities, uh, all sorts of things. So what I have here is I got my white background and then I have, of course, the pencil layer and that's just the pencil. So I can, you know, take any color I want and draw behind it. Let me just get a base layer here. Oh, you can't really see that yet, but I will show you. Once we do the line art, it'll start to make more sense. 
But uh, basically, the palette here is just these colors up here. These are colors I've already pre-decided for them. Um, I just have that here for a uh, fast basis, uh, reference basis. But the line art layer is what we care about. And so what we're going to start, I'm at about 3,000 by 3,000 resolution, I believe. Some people work, you know, 3,000 to 5,000. A lot of people suggest 300 DPI on your resolution. Uh, bigger the better. Start your line work as big as you can and do everything at that resolution. And then when you downscale it, it just gets sharper and it gets more crisp and more refined. So big resolution, big pointer. But what we're going to do, I'm going to choose the brush. Uh, we're going to have three pixels. Uh, three pixels wide is what I like. And then make sure that you have this little checkbox here, the, uh, the pressure button. I leave everything else at 100, but uh, keep the pressure and you'll see why later on. So you have that selected, and then we're going to select the pen tool. So now I'm going to take this pen tool, and what I like to do, I generally like to zoom in. Whoops. Got a little lost there. <laughs> uh, let's go up here. My bad. I don't know why I'm having a hard time here. All right, I like to work at about two to 300%. I like to zoom in so I can see my lines. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna select our first point. I'm gonna start right under the shoulder here. There's point one, and then I'm gonna go to the end point. So we got our two points chosen, and then I'm going to select the middle area, which is where I'm gonna bend it. And when you work with the pen tool, there is going to be a lot of control and alt, or if you're on a Mac, command and alt. I use both, but uh, I'm on a PC today. So when you hold down control or command, depending if you're on, you're on a Mac, it just grabs that point and bends the entire layer. And now what we can see here, I have an, a bend over here but I want to push that back. I want to follow these lines as closely as possible. So I'm going to make another point there, hold down control, and then push up to follow that line. And in fact, I'm going to lower the opacity on this pencil layer here so you can see it a little bit more. And then what we'll do, you know, you'll just right click, stroke path. We're going to keep this off, simulate pressure off. Hit OK, hit Enter. And that's what happens when you make it on the pencil layer. <laughs> Let's try that one more time. Keep track of your layers. That's a very important point. All right, now I'm on the line art layer. That's what I wanted. Now we can see this. Stroke, bam, enter. All right, so that's just kind of a basic example. Let's try that again. Let's start here, here, middle, hold down control. Got it where I want. A lot of control Z you'll be doing too. All right, and then hit that, enter, bam. So this is what we're gonna be doing. Some lines are easier than others. You know, you'll see like, oh, that seems pretty easy. Yes, but it starts getting a little rough later on. Uh, you'll see why. Okay, I'm hitting the wrong buttons. I'm, I'm using a new technique here, new buttons. I usually work on my laptop and it's a lot easier stream flow. This is the first time I'm ever using a PC uh, for this type of project, so bear with me. So, all right, now we got the back lines here. If I take off the pencil layer, you can see that. But what I'm gonna do, I like to start, keep in mind when you use the pen tool, the less points you have, the better if you're trying to pull a curve because you don't want any bumps. Now I like to start from the beginning to the end and see how much I can get away with. So I'm gonna select the middle and then I'm gonna hold down control, pull it. Now, these little levers here, these little lines, if I keep control down when I click on one of these lines, it's gonna keep it straight and allows me to stretch that and pull that. And it looks like I'm gonna get away with this pretty well. Um, I'm gonna pull the midpoint down, see what I can get away with. But, hmm. Let's see here. 
See, now if I select a point here, I might be able to still pull that without it looking jagged. Control, lots of little fine tuning adjustments. But sometimes you don't want to use control, sometimes you want to use alt, and that's where it gets really hairy. All right, so now what we're gonna do, stroke craft, wham. So there we go. Same thing here. So this one I got I got knocked out pretty quick. And it's always good to make sure, like one thing I like about doing line art is I always try to focus that when it comes to anatomy, I mean it's it's obviously organic, so you know, you never want any straight lines if you can avoid it. Even if a line looks like it's straight, just slightly curve it. So like, let's take these legs here. So I'm gonna start point A to point B. I like to kind of pull that in a little bit, come down here, pull this in a little bit. Now this is where we can have some fun with the Alt key. I'm only gonna pull one side of the lever. I'm gonna pull it down and push it, but I wanna keep it as straight as possible because you don't wanna create a bump here, like a, a, like a little jagged ridge. So I'm pulling it towards the next one. Then maybe I'm gonna pull this one down. Right click. And there we go. Pull that in. Bam, bam. You, you can start getting really intricate with the liner. I'm gonna start speeding up here a little bit just so you can kind of see it all come together. Now, for the record, I've actually already done this character. I'm kind of redoing him again because, you know, it's, it's fairly simple. Ooh, that doesn't look good. I don't know why that doesn't look good. But uh, he, he's fairly simple. The line work is not too complex. And if there's a little... If there's a couple mistakes in here, that's okay. I mean, it's all good. All right, so we're gonna come around here. And I like to keep the lines connected as much as I can. If you can keep it going, that always helps. It keeps your flow a lot better. Now in this, I'm gonna use the Alt key. I just wanna pull one end. I don't wanna pull another end, but I wanna keep it as straight as possible. I guess I am going to adjust this one. This might be a good example. If we get a point, you'll see what happens. Uh, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Right here. Wham. Wham. And then we'll do the sole. All right. I'm actually gonna just go ahead and keep that line running right here. Path, wham. Now here's something we can do. So these are supposed to be shoelaces or maybe this one right here is a shoelace or the idea of a shoelace. So I'm gonna choose that little line right there. I'm gonna go to stroke path, simulate pressure, Wham, hit OK. And then you get this natural pressure simulation. So undo pencil, that's where we're sitting at. And then let's go here. Wham, wham. You can see how fast it can come together. Whoa. See, had the pressure on there. And I'm gonna just try to go as fast as possible because I know that you know you can watch this happen and I don't want it to be like watching grass grow. And if it's a little sloppy, so be it. But any type of 
no pressure. Now I do want to put pressure on this, kind of the, the seam of the pants. There we go. So now, there's our pants. So if I zoom out, that's 100% right there. Not looking too bad. I mean, there's some there's some issues. We're gonna go back and fine tune this line art. Um, this is just getting them down, but uh, they'll slowly start coming together. So let's get back in there. Let's do the tail. Um, I'm going to pull that out a little bit, bring it back in. And it's all about finding that, you know, the, that perfect area. You know, if I, if I chose this point back here, obviously you're not going to get that curve that you want. I want to pull this out a little bit. You start just eyeballing it a little bit. Now here's more intricate stuff right here. So this is a new thing I've been doing with some of the, the fur. Let me do that. And then I just like to go ahead and put pressure on. I used to not put pressure on, but I like kind of the, the silhouette, or not the silhouette, but the, the haze of the tail where the fur transfers. So let's go up here. And actually right here, I just want to bring that in a little bit, just kind of show the slope. I'm not drawing super detailed, you know, clothing folds. That's for another time. But uh, I just wanted to get the idea of the character down. This is actually more of a concept drawing than it is a, like a final piece. Wham, wham, wham. And some of this stuff is just really tiny, almost to the point where I should zoom in a couple more hundred percent, but. All right, so when it comes to fingers, this can get a little tricky sometimes. And I like to go sometimes use the elliptical tool um, and do, you know, pathways. But I'm still going to try to go ahead and do the pen tool itself because fingers do get pretty crazy. So you're going to have to really zoom in. Bam, bam, bam. Okay, whoops. But w one thing I really like about using the pen tool is sometimes your lines end up looking better after, like, even if your pencil drawing has a little bit of weirdness to uh, the way the lines are drawn, sometimes the pencil tool or the pen tool can uh, clean it up. Now I can already tell that since, since these are not even, we're gonna get a point on that and I really don't want that. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and just sacrifice that little pull down there. We'll see what we get here. Uh, we'll probably live with that. Connect, connect. I'm going to go ahead and use the elliptical tool on this. Uh, let's see, three transform. Pull that a little bigger. It should match up. A lot of fine tuned finessing work here. Stroke path, bam. Eh, it works. And if I want to go back in here with the brush manually and I can close these gaps and we can actually do more of that uh, after we're completely done, we'll also erase away some of these hard edge lines so you have a more organic look. Uh, all right. In there, bam. Sorry if I'm making noises. When I hit OK, <laughs> bam. I'm not Emerald. Kind 
kind of starting to get the hang of using this on Windows now. I never like to use perfectly straight lines. All right, getting there. Hands aren't just hard to draw, they're hard to do line art on. So this is where you have to start getting creative, try to find the smoothest, most natural lines that you can get. I want to pull that up a little bit more. It's kind of hard. Eh. It'll be okay, I guess. It's for tutorial purposes. Okay. Now, this is a mechanical object. This is actually a tool, so I will go ahead and keep those lines straight. If you want that really super stylish, cartoony look to it, then you know, make it crazy and curvy. And actually, you know what? Screw it. I am going to make that a little curvy with the, uh, <laughs> with the screwdriver. Why not? There we go. All right, so see, there's this little bump right here, and I don't like that. So I'm going to go ahead and Control-Z that, or Control-Alt-Z that. I'm going to try to delete that point and see how it compensated for it. So I'm going to see if I can keep that smoother now. Hit Stroke Path. Bingo. Fixed. All right, so now I'm going to pull this bad boy out. Free Transform. Line it up. Wham. Probably gonna go gonna have to go back here to the pen tool. Wham. Get the little edge of the finger here. I'm gonna pull that a little bit down. All right. And then we got the edge of the screwdriver right here. Whoops. Just getting a little sloppy with some of the detailing. I want to put pressure on that. Now, I could manually draw this in. There are things that I do manually draw in. But I'm really about that very fine crystal sheen of line work. You know, I know some people love the organic look, and that's fantastic. There's a lot of artwork out there I love that does that, but that's not what I'm after here today. Whoa, how does that happen? All right, here we go. Now, I'm going to have to put this point here. Pull this back. Once we get up to the eyes, that'll be fun. I love doing eyes. I think eyes are my one of my favorite things in character design because I think that's where everything starts. Uh, now we're going to try that again. Hold down shift to get a perfect circle. Too big. Sometimes I have to have a couple tries here. Uh, say it's too far from that line. Yeah, that works. Bam. All right, back to the pen tool. Yeah, but you will find that you are controlling a lot in doing digital art. And that's okay. It's okay to make mistakes, try again. Okay, 
And really when you're using the pen tool, it does just come down to, ooh, there we go. It really just comes down to trial and error about where your best points are gonna be. Whoops, let's do that, pull that, bam. All right, we are to the face. Um, now the whiskers, I, I like to keep certain things separate and more organic. I like to draw the whiskers in, uh, or it doesn't matter what you're drawing. I mean, this is a freaking cartoon cat, so it doesn't matter. But I'm, I'm saying that when you start getting to the coloring, you're going to want to keep that, those little fine details separate. But let's start with the cheek line here, two points. And this is the one I really want to get right. Um, it's very important to find that exact curve because this is really the, the shape of the character. Look at that, three points, and I was able to draw that whole line. Or should I say build that whole line? There we go, perfect. So he's starting to come together. marks here <laughs> yeah he's like please don't screw me up make me not look terrible so I will give him the line work he deserves all right pull this up here follow that line looks like I'm a little short there I'm gonna pull that and then pull this back Yeah, that works. Now I'm not gonna do a direct point on this ear. I'm gonna actually kind of round it off a little bit because that's kind of his design that I like. All right, down here. But yeah, just keep in mind, I mean, this is the initial line work. This is not like the done line work yet. We're just laying them down. And one thing that I've learned uh, through other people, uh, if you can, this will also go for the coloring technique, but if you can avoid, unless it's a stylistic approach, if you can avoid any type of extreme whites or blacks that's going to help you um, turn lights to whites and then blacks to dark colors like so if you're doing lighting uh, maybe a white should be an extremely light yellow or an, ex an extremely light blue or red uh, and then blacks usually for shadowing i like to use extremely dark purples and it just kind of makes your drawings pop a little bit more digitally uh, they're a little bit more interesting to look at. Um, and I, I found that out later on and some advice other people have given me. So we're getting close here. I like to keep the, the eyes for last. It's kind of rewarding for me. This is like the best part. All right, so now for the ears, I'm just going to go ahead and just manually draw these in. Whatever, that's, that's fine. <laughs> uh, let's do the mouth. Oh, come on. You know what? I'm just gonna keep that as a separate deal. I'm gonna draw this line separate. All right, and then for the teeth, I'm gonna go ahead and do that myself. <laughs> Why not? Oh, and the little nose line, I like to just draw in, that's fine. Okay, let's go ahead, let's do the nose. Now I like to close in the, like for something like the nose, this little uh, 
circle here on the pen tool, I'm gonna hit that and close it, then hold down control, click on it again so it highlights it again, and then I click again and make that point. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And, <coughs> ooh. But uh, now I will pull that nose a little bit wider. Whew, I might need a drink of water. Ah, we'll call that a day right there. That's good. Okay, so for the eyebrows, close that loop. And on this one, I'm going to right click and fill path. And ugh, this is the problem with double monitors. Okay. So we'll just do foreground color, whatever color I have selected in the window. There's the black. Got it. We'll do this one as well. And sometimes I'll see in my pencil drawings that I need to do some little adjustments. So I'll do that. I don't recommend it all the time. Maybe people would say just get it right the first time when you're drawing it. <laughs> They're probably right. I'm going to do a simulate pressure on the top of the eyelid, because why not? All right, now we're getting close. Whoa. Stroke, no pressure. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my brush and increase it by one pixel on the top part of the eye. This is my style, but I'm gonna give it just a little bit of a thicker eye line on this top part. Do the same over here. Stroke. All right. And then we'll just go back to three. Getting real close now. Okay, let me see here. Let's go ahead and begin with the eyes. Now with the eyes, I usually have it separated on four layers and then I merge them together. I have uh, the eye rim, the pupil, the pupil lines, and the reflection. So in this, I'm going to go ahead, create one, two, three, four. I already have them labeled in my head, but the bottom layer here is going to be the elliptical tool. And I like the eyes to be really refined, so I'm going to take it down to two pixels. And I'm going to line this up here and try to match that eye size. It's very important to get eyes right. Okay, that looks about right. Stroke path. And then here as well. Hold down shift when you do this too. That's what makes you get the perfect circle. So now I'm gonna go in. Okay, so now we've got that rim. Oh crap. Whoop. I should probably put the pressure on. There we go. Accidentally erased some of the eyeball there. Okay, and I like this layer to be a little bit lighter. Maybe about a 70% opacity. And then the layer two, pretty easy. I'm just gonna go find a pupil size here and stamp it. So this is gonna have to be probably about 20. I like to go for that little bit of a Disney look where the pupil's real big. Okay, now he looks psycho. <laughs> uh, pressure off. And you could stamp this with a mouse too. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna erase. If you need to do opacity so you can see what you're doing, do that. 
So now I'm going to turn the pencil off so I can see a little bit more what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and do two pixels again with pressure on and I am going to give him the eye lines. Now four is similar to the, the pupil. Instead we're going to go white and we're going to stamp reflections. And I like to do two reflections, usually about seven pixels and actually about six pixels for the, the big reflection and a small reflection. So I can just stamp, stamp, and then I like to go back down to three pixels and do a second reflection. Bam. Okay, that looks good, looks fine. Let me double check that the rim of the uh, eyeball. That looks good. All right, so I'm going to select all these four layers, right click, merge layers, and we will call that eyes. Now I'm going to make another one called whiskers, because why not? Whiskers. I'm going to turn the pencil layer back on so I can kind of see where I'm at. We're going to go back to three pixels with pressure on. And then this is just going to be nice. Well, be nice if it was black. Okay. Just nice, natural. Whoa, too much. A lot of control z in here. If I can just get that right. Um, uh, yeah, that'll work. All right, so let's zoom out. And this is what we got with our line art. Didn't take too long. It looks like I did not finish this other part of the bow tie. So let's go ahead and finish that part of the bow tie. This shouldn't take long. Sorry about that. Back in there. And stroke. Bam, bam. All right, now. <laughs> that looks better. Okay. So now what we're going to do, we're not done with the line art yet. Now we're going to go through and fine detail all the edges to give it a more organic look. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my eraser tool. And this can be done with the mouse. I've done it with a mouse, but bear in mind, it does get a little tedious, but it can be done. Uh, I like to choose the soft brush, uh, maybe around eight pixels. I'm gonna keep pressure sensitivity enabled. You don't need that, but uh, this is where you're gonna be able to differentiate between a tablet and a mouse. But let's go ahead and zoom in. So we got that pressure, nine, nine should be fine. So what I'm gonna do is lightly stroke and sharpen those edges, fade them off. And I'm gonna kind of scrub that a little bit, but every end line is gonna benefit. So, now, I'm not gonna do it here because honestly, I haven't really paid attention with the window side. I normally will rotate the canvas if you have a tablet. It's great to have your lines go with the, the best way that your hand moves. So if you can do that, great. I'm just kind of working with the angle that I have in front of me right now. So there are definitely some downsides to this, but I'll work with it. And I'm going to take my little pen tool. I'm going to fill that gap in there a little bit. There was a little bit of a hole. And you want to make sure all your uh, all the gaps are closed for the coloring because that's going to make a big difference. All right, so same here. Yeah, it just starts to have this nice, fine, organic look to it. 
every single line. And I'm just moving pretty quickly here. I'm, oh, I guess I, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw that in. Screw it. <laughs> yeah, that works. Uh, all right. Let's go back to the eraser. And there's a little bit of a, a notch here. Let's get rid of that. A little bit of a notch here. You want to, like, believe it or not, even though they're so subtle, you, they will start sticking out like an eyesore if you don't take care of those. So I highly recommend taking care of those. Also, this is why I like having whiskers on a separate layer, because as you can see, they're not going to get in the way. I can just go ahead and rub this across, and it's not going to interfere. Because the whiskers, just, they don't need to be with the normal line art yet. Fade the mouth too. All right, we're just about done with the line art for now. Now, one thing I like to do, this is a stylistic approach. You don't have to do this. And honestly, some people may not agree with me on this. Uh, I'm going to lower my flow here on the eraser to about 20. And this is a stylistic thing for cartoons. I like to make this line under the eyes lighter. One more time. Whoop, let's try that one more time. Eh, I don't want to go that far. All right, I don't know. It just this the way the the cheek meets the eye. I'm not quite sure, but I, I kind of like that. It's a personal preference. Whoops. Alright, I think we have done it. So zoom out. There's your line art. So that's what we're going to work with and now we can move on to base color. One thing I haven't done yet to show you, one thing I like about line art, when I was mentioning earlier about lights and blacks, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to blending options and go to color overlay. And what I like to do is choose a very, very dark gray. Because I think that just, it makes a little bit of a difference in having that just that jet black. Uh, a little bit of a dark gray softens the edges and tone. Now if you go too light, it'll start looking weird with the colors clashing. But um, yeah, just a very, very dark gray. And then I just leave that on the layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and save. So, all right. I think we are ready for base color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a new layer and put that under the line art. And we're gonna call it base color. Now, as you can see, I've already got the template figured out for him. I know where, what color everything's gonna be. So we're just gonna lay that down and we're, what we're gonna do is just a lot of uh, the wand tool. And this is why it's important to make sure that all your gaps are closed because when you use this, uh, you're gonna need to so let me let me just make sure my gaps are closed. <laughs> uh, let's go to black. I didn't have black there. Let's close this up. Everything looks pretty tidy here. I don't see anything that could give me an issue. This probably needs to be closed a little bit more. And I think we're okay. I think we're gonna get away with this. All right, okay, base color time. This is where we're at. We're getting close, Enzo. So let's go ahead and start with the pants. So I'm gonna select the line art layer, and then I'm gonna select the pants. Now, we wanna make sure that we get all the gaps as much as possible on this, because if I just start coloring with this now, uh, it's not going to get everything selected. So this is a very important step, especially when you're working at large res resolution. That's why you want to do it. Uh, go up to Select, Modify, Expand. And I like to do two pixels. 
So it's pulling that color layer into the line. So after I have that done, select your base color layer. It's very important that you keep selecting your base color layer. You don't want to accidentally color on the line art layer. That's why it's also very important to save. Uh, but what we're going to do, let me just go ahead and zoom in. I've got my paint bucket tool. Bam. That's a pretty dark color. I can't remember. I can't believe those are the color of the pants that I chose for him. Really? Oh, well, we'll go with it. <laughs> so, as you can see, it filled in pretty much everything, but we do have some gaps uh, on the edges. And this is where it's going to come into play that you got to go back and fine tune everything. Uh, what I like to do on the white layer, the base white layer, I'm going to add a color overlay option. Uh, color overlay. And I'm going to do, I like just to use a, a medium gray. So what happens when you, when you color with lights, you can go, you can just toggle the gray. And then when you color with darks, you can just have it on white so you can see everything. So when I start using lighter colors, I'm going to, I can switch over to color overlay and I can see where my lights are not being filled in. So it's very handy. But uh, yeah, let's go to the base color. I like to move with each part of the drawing manually. So I don't want to have everything go untouched. So let's fill in that gap. Fill in these gaps. Every little bit counts. All right, now the pants are colored. You got pants. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go ahead. Let's go over my color palette here. Um, his shoes, I believe. You know what? I did something very stupid. There we go. That was the color of pants I was wanting for him. I didn't use the eyedropper tool. Getting too far ahead of myself. I knew those pants looked too dark. So now he's got tan shoes. So select the line art layer again, wand tool, select that, hold down shift, select the other one. And then we're going to go to select, modify, expand, two pixels. And then go back to base color, get your paint bucket, boom. So now, looks like that filled in pretty nicely. Now I'm just going to go ahead and use the same color for the pants as these bottom soles. That's, that's fine. I don't really care right now. Uh, we're going to do the same thing here. Now this, this isn't going to grab everything that I want it to grab. In fact, you know what? This is where, <laughs> this is where, uh, you might have to go in manual. I'm too close for missiles. I'm switching to guns. If any of you people don't know that reference, shame on you. I'm going to switch that up to about seven pixels with pressure. Now you can do this with a mouse. So I'm not doing the world's best job, but you know, I got a little ridge there. Oh, crud. Now look, look what I did. I made a boo-boo. I was coloring on the line art layer. Bad, 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 bad. You want to catch that quickly or that that's why you want to save because you know, there's a point where <laughs> it's bad news bears. By the way, the quote I said earlier about missiles and guns, that's, yeah, that's Top Gun. I can't even remember if I already said that. I'm so occupied right now. And if my voice seems monotone, I apologize for that too. I promise it's not always monotone. I can turn it into uh, a show host voice. You know, I can, you know, talk 
like a narrator. Oh, look what I also forgot. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. There we go. Or I can talk like this. $3,000 off. I'm crazy. Anyway. Let's go ahead. Why does it look like that? Oh, no. That would be why I was coloring with the wrong color. Now it looks better. Let's select the shirt. Same thing, line art layer selected, wand tool, hold down shift. I'm going to select multiple parts. Whoa. I think I got it all selected. All right. Select, expand, two pixels, go back to base color, and then select the blue because he's got a blue shirt. He's a blue guy. Wham. All right, starting to come together. And then what we'll do with that same color selected, fill in the gaps. You want all those little gaps filled. This is where you get that refinement in your drawing. Actually, that one filled out pretty nicely. That works. Uh, all right, bow tie time. Select, expand, base color, bam, bam. All right, now we're getting close. Now we're gonna get to the fur color. He is a gray cat. He is totally gray. Line art selected, wham, 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 wham. Ooh. All right, so got all that selected. Modify, expand to base color. Oh, I didn't choose the head. What's wrong with me? That's okay, no matter. All right, same thing. Lots of practice. Practice makes perfect. Repetition. We're laying down. Okay, so we got a light color here. Ugh. Pretty scary looking. Uh, I think I'm going to do better on the dark layer. The light gray with the dark gray because it is technically a lighter color. So you can see a lot of areas didn't get filled in. So what I'm going to do, I want to get that brush size. And again, you can do this with a mouse, but start doing the detail work. I'm going to go ahead and just put that there. Why not? There. Good Lord, Enzo. You look like a psycho. All right. Got that filled. Looking good. All right, if I missed anything, hopefully I'll catch it later. <laughs> oh, tail. I don't think I got that. All right. So, now I'm just gonna go ahead and choose white. This is a part where I like to choose it. Some people like to choose a little bit of off-whites. This is something I'm still doing right now. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and color the teeth and eyes in manually. Okay, that's fine. I'm gonna switch back to white here. And I can't remember, I believe this is his nose. I never remember that. Put that little nose in there. 
And then actually, I'm going to go back to white. This is one part I actually forgot to do. He is a two toned muzzle face. Actually, both of these were white. And we'll just actually. I'm gonna turn off the opacity on that, or not the uh, opacity, but the pressure. I'm just gonna start blasting it with color here. Sometimes the process of coloring manually feels really good. <laughs> you know, you just you feel like you have so much control, and it can actually be a very good thing to do. Some people prefer the process. And again, you can do it with a mouse. I have done everything that we have discussed with a mouse in this tutorial. I'm gonna do some, uh, choose this little scrub brush here. I like to just soften up that transition. So why not? All right, getting close, being done with the base color. We spent like what, an hour on this? Uh, all right, we're going a lighter pink here. Actually, I want a lighter pink. I don't like that. He's got little pinky ears. There we go. Now, I could use the wand tool, but sometimes it's just faster to just color it in. And I just realized there's a little piece right there that I could show. There we go. All right. And one last thing. Uh, this is an old color palette, isn't it? Yeah. All right. We're going to give him some blue eyes. Mickey blue eyes. All right, so there is your base color. Getting close now. So now all we gotta do is we're gonna do lighting and shading. Shading I think takes a little bit more time, but I'm gonna create two layers over here above the base color. One, two. One of them I'm gonna call shadow. And the other I'm gonna call light. And then on shadow, what I'm gonna do is go to blending properties, do color overlay, and then I'm gonna choose a really, really, really dark purple, about right here. Okay, and then I'm gonna lower the opacity of this layer to about 30%. And then I'm gonna right click on it, create clipping mask. And that's gonna look at the color that I've done and only stay on that color. Now with light, I'm gonna go to blending options color overlay and on this light I'm gonna keep it yellowish so a super light yellow and then I'm gonna lower that opacity to about 70 I want to keep it still kind of prominent kind of strong but I want a warmer light so and then right click on that create clipping mask and the great thing about clipping masks is that, yeah, there, it's only gonna follow what you've colored. So I can scribble outside the lines. So if I just take this, this layer and it doesn't recognize it. So you can get really, really clean shadowing on the edges. So very helpful. But what's great is I can actually take the pen tool, <laughs> back to the pen tool, and we can use that for the shading, not just line work, and I love that. Now. I'm not the world's greatest shader. Again, I'm still fairly new at a lot of this. So if there are experienced people watching me shade, please try not to, or be gentle. <laughs> uh, I, know I, I know I'm still learning. But for tutorial purposes, um, I'm still gonna try. And I just realized I forgot to uh, just do a quick messy
There we go. There we go. I mean, it's not the world's greatest, but... Okay. Line art. I've been seeing this thing that, that's been bothering me. Ah! Why does that look so blocky? <laughs> it's like I'm going to have to actually use the color, huh? There we go. Lord, that was bothering me. Okay. Shadow time. So we're going to have the shadow layer selected. We're going back to the pen tool. This is great. I love this. So when it comes to shadowing, I realize I didn't do the, the screwdriver yet. I'll get to that. When it comes to shadowing, uh, pretend you have a light source. Pretend he's standing outside and the sun shining on him. Where is the light coming? I'm going to pretend that the sun is in front of him slightly to his right. So it's going to just kind of beam up his entire chest and legs but there'll be shadows on the right side of his body mostly. So that's what I'm going to go for. That's what I'm going to imagine. And uh, we're going to do that. But before we do that, before I forget, <laughs> I'll just get this done. I'm, I just chose a color because why not? Actually, and then go to swatches I'm just gonna choose kind of a dark gray here wham and then a very very light gray all right there we go for all you OCD people out there hopefully that helps so, back to shadow. Sorry, I just keep getting delayed on this. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the pants. I feel like I'm doing okay with this, uh, but I can bring this pen tool outside the pants and we'll be okay. It's, it's the inside that matters. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select about right here <laughs> on the crotch, and I'm gonna select the end point here in the middle just kind of bend that a little bit. And I still want to follow this line here. And then I can just take it on the outside and it's okay. It doesn't matter. And then I'm going to take it all the way up here. Bend it. Now this will, it'll ride over on that, the shirt. Now it's okay if it does, you can just erase it. Um, but I'm going to try to avoid as much of that as possible. I still will have to do some, but that's okay. And I'm just going to close this gap here for, for the time being. I'm going to separate this. We're going to do a lot of fill path on this. Fill path, foreground color, but what's great, it doesn't matter what your color is because we've set a color overlay and it's going to be listening to that. So we hit that. There you go. And then I can bring this down, bend it. Pull that straight up, straight up. Boom, 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 boom. Fill path, and voila. Look, his pants are shadowed, they're shaded. Uh, now we're going to look at the shoes. I'm just gonna go ahead and, not really sure, let's just do that. Right about there, up, down, circle around, fill path, bam. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not perfect. But uh, now here, I'm gonna go ahead and do my own line here. Sometimes the faster you go, the better. <laughs> and then I will take this, 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 this. I just kind of get very liberal with the clicking on the pen tool. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so we got the shoes. And I'm going to go ahead and 
go for the tail here, just point A to point B, bend it, bend it, come, over, come up over and in. Fill path, wham, sure, why not? Okay, so I'm still kind of learning this whole side shading thing with the folds. And I know a lot of like anime shaders out there are really good at it. <laughs> uh, I'm still experimenting every day. Um, I'm not the world's greatest shader. So please have mercy. I'm going to close this, hold down the control, reselect, select the middle, pull down. Uh, no, that's not right. I got to follow this line, right? Right? I mean, God, I don't know. I don't even know anymore. Because that's where the shadow folds are. Fill path. Oh, that doesn't look good. <laughs> uh, well, here, I'm just going to do this first. Fill. Why not? Screw it. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna go for it. Uh, I don't know why I'm having so much trouble here. why that fold is giving me so much problems but I'll get off of it we'll come back to that <laughs> I'll figure it out now sometimes if you can it, it can feel really nice to just go ahead and draw it in Sometimes it can speed it up. Put a little shadow here. Especially on the fingers. Um, I like to... I like to do those manually if possible. I don't know if that's going to work. You know what? Again, I'm not the world's best. Sorry. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that bump there. go up down around fill it in there we go very small shadow work over here I don't even know if I should it's probably not right but that's okay and I'll just kind of color this back part in and then over here There's the neck. Draw that in. Draw that in. I'm just doing some fast shading methods here, so I could get really pristine with it, but sure. Get out the eraser. Don't be afraid to get out the eraser. It's a good tool to have. <laughs> Okay, and then I can't remember how I shaded this. I'm not looking at my old reference. I'm just trying to see if I can do it again on my own. Pull 
wrong tool. Uh, let's see. I don't know how that's going to work, but now one thing I like to do, one thing I'm learning, if you have like a round object, you usually pull it the opposite way. As you're seeing, like I'm pulling it down. Oh, you know what? That looks like garbage. Let's just do that. That's fine. Um, maybe add in some little, little shadows here. Right where the fingers are. Well, I'm going to make that whole thing dark right there. Uh, let's see, the back of this will be shaded, the back of that will be shaded. Now one thing you can do with some of your shading, you don't even have to use fill, you can use stroke, which gives you a pretty interesting look on depth. So I'm going to take this line here, and rather than use a fill, I'm going to stroke it. Okay, that was too thick. I got to back that down to about three. Watch what it does. Stroke path. Boom. Now we have like a nice subtle 3D gradient. So that, that, that works pretty well and I like that. I like that look. But generally for hands, I, uh, I do manual brushing. Um, I just feel like you have more control. This is where a tablet does have advantages. But uh, again, you don't need a tablet for that. Yeah, I don't like that. Smooth lines are key. All right, I'm gonna erase that. And again, um, just bear with me. The, this is moving along pretty quickly. I'm trying to keep this going for demonstration purposes. But, uh, all right, woo, got a little booger. There you go, 3D the eye. Kind of shade the top of the eye here. Other thing I like doing, it's kind of a Disney esque tactic. Shade the eye. Light shade of the eyebrows. Okay, and then even, even the mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, you look stupid. There we go. Raise that out. All right, and then what else we're gonna do here? I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, good lord. I'm going to make a little cheek line shadow here. Kind of give it that illusion of the sun hitting him. Fill in the little blanks. I'm going to fill this in back here too. And then for the ear, we'll go ahead and do that. Whoops. Fill in. Okay, and then as you can see, gotta fill that in manually. Actually, all right, here's something that happens sometimes when you're working with layers. So I'm taking my shadow. It looks like I don't have the shadow filled there. And I'm like, why is nothing happening? Well, the reason it's not, not happening is because apparently there isn't color there. The shadow is revealing that. So I'm going to take my eyedropper tool and go in and color under that shadow layer. And it's gone. <laughs> Same thing here. I noticed this with the shirt. If I select that blue and I color... 
Okay, that's something different. That actually might be the shadow. Uh, yes, it was. But that's something to check. That is definitely something to check. You want to make sure that you don't miss that. Uh, let's go back to the pan tool. I'm going to pull this the opposite way. I'm just going to do a manual erase. I'm not going to sit there and mess with the paths. And when it comes to shading hair, it's another thing I'm not uh, the world's most brilliant at. So bear with me again. I'm, I'm not the world's best at that. Eh. Eh. <laughs> okay. Well, this is a fast. This is a fast shade job. It's you know it, it could you could spend a lot more time on it, and that's that's fine. But uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to move on to the the light rim, the light rimming. We're getting close. We're still going back to the pen tool, but I think the lighting goes a lot faster. Now I'm at a very large resolution here. Uh, depending on how big it is, I usually like to choose three, but sometimes you can go four. Just be very careful uh, what you're about to see happen. Uh, we're going to create light sources within the shadows, kind of giving the illusion that there's light behind him. So uh, this really helps make your image pop, and it's a nice aesthetic to add. So what I like to do is look for any of the, where the shadows lie, and then I take my pen tool, and we're going to stroke. But we're going to use a lot of pressure simulation. So I'm going to start here to here because that's where you know the edge of his body is. I'm going to right click, stroke path, simulate pressure, wham. It's extremely subtle but you see what it's doing. So same with here. We'll do the arm. You'll see it a little bit better here. Stroke path. There we go under here. Stroke path. There we go. So it's got a nice nice look on it. You really see it with uh, darker areas of the body like when we get to the legs which I'm going to do next. And you can be a little more liberal with your line because it's kind of a, a messy light source. But it, it really does make an effective difference. Whoa. And then once you see this, ugh, didn't pull it enough over. So if you want to see that line a little bit more, I got under the line art a little bit too much. There we go. And it's just more trial and error. I mean, and you can use, you know, I'm using again like a warm light source. You could use like a, a colder blue light source. Um, depending on how you want your image to look. Oop, got a bump on that one. Come on. Yeah, that's fine. But yeah, that's one kind of rule that I've been working on is with the rim lighting. And I'm not sure if I'm doing it correct, but I'm trying. <laughs> like only light the sources that are actually dark. You can see it a lot better. And, you can, and uh, this is where, again, a tablet can have advantages because you can bring it in and do your own manual light rimming. You can also do that on the screwdriver. And then I'm actually going to put this light rim almost more like a reflection on the other side. I'm not sure if that's going to be the best choice. 
I'm not even going to simulate pressure on it. There we go. I guess that, I guess that works. I'm going to go back here on the other side of the nose. Whew. That works. And back to the cheek. Stroke. Path. Simulate pressure. But yeah, it looks like we've spent about an hour and 20 minutes on this so far. We've gone from a pencil drawing to a near complete digital finish. And again, this is my production technique. I mean, there's so many different people that have different techniques and they could look at what I'm doing and go, eh, I wouldn't do it that way. And you know what, that's, that's great. <laughs> There are techniques out there I see other people doing that just blow my mind and it's amazing and I think it's awesome. But uh, why did that not do anything? But, uh, you know, to each their own and it's a learning process. You know, you're never, there's really no wrong way of doing this. I'm adding in my own little touches, you know, because why not? And then I like to come in under the eyes here and lighten those up a little bit. A little bit more sheen and gloss. One thing I actually forgot is uh, I forgot my little white ears. Little, little ear here. There you go. Um, all right, we're just about done with the light rim and we're gonna do the final post-production techniques which don't take near as long. They're actually go really fast. They're actually kind of fun. I'm just gonna, woo, I'm gonna do a, my own rim lighting here, manual. But as you can see, um, when you have the pen tool, it makes you very dangerous if you only have a mouse. So that's pretty nice. Uh, I think I'll go ahead and just say, I'll, I'll call it quits for now on this. Uh, we can just move on to the final production. Oop, I did forget one major source. I can't believe I almost forgot this. The thing that I said I would come back to. I know I don't have a shadow on that, but I'm still putting the rim lighting on it. Yeah, we'll s that's fine. Who cares? I'll just leave that there for now. So, what we got, let's zoom out. This is 100%. This is what we got now. But if we really want to make this pop a little bit more, we can do more. Um, again, I did the cell shading technique. You can do airbrushing. You know, you can use your burn and dodge tools, and we are about to do that. Uh, but for now, I'm going to still keep it kind of that chiseled look. I like the hybrid look. But what I like to do, let's create a folder. Um, I'm going to put it at the top here, take all our layers, uh, other than the white, pop it in the folder. And I'm just going to call this, you know, photo PSD, you know, Photoshop file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, right click, duplicate group. And then I'm going to take all these layers, well, except the palette, <laughs> take all these layers and merge. And what I've done, let me ungroup it here. What I've done is I've flattened out the entire image. Let me uncheck that. And it's just one image. And I save my original production files so we can go in and do some crazy things to this and not risk losing anything. So from this point, I am going to, to get out my burn and dodge tool. These are great little tools. Now I like to 
usually keep off the pressure. Um, soft brush exposure, get it real low, like 10%, 9%, maybe 8%. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna scrub where the sunlight is a little bit more and where the darks, I'm gonna scrub that a little bit more. So let's go ahead and just scrub that in. And this is on mid-tones. And this is just kind of a, a sloppy, messy overview. And I'll show you the difference after I'm done. You don't, you may not see it right now, but when I show you the before and after, you will. Get that bow tie going. All right. Now we're gonna go to the darks. Make sure that's really low, about 10%. I'm gonna do mid-tones and let's start making those darks dark. So now what you can see is if I show you the before and after, here's what I just did. That's what it looked like before. So now it's got kind of a more 3D look to it. You see some sunlight on them, but we're not done yet. Now we're going to pull out the adjustment layers. These are great. Um, I like to use a vibrance adjustment layer, pop it on top. And I also like to use two photo filters one cold, one dark. But for the vibrance, I'm gonna kick up the vibrance about, I don't know, 50, why not? And then this one, I'm gonna be a cool filter. And then this one is a warm filter. I'm gonna select all three of these and I'm gonna do a clipping mask only on this layer. So now I'm gonna select, these are layer masks set on these adjustment layers. That's non-destructive editing. That's what I love about it. Uh, we're going to get out our brush tool. I'm going to do a soft a soft brush head, maybe about, you know, get it pretty big. You can kind of work with it. I'm going to lower the flow to about 30%, uh, no pressure. And what I'm going to do is I want to draw off, or should I say, I'm going to color slash erase the, the coolness off where the sun is. So the colds are, or the shadows are going to be cold, the light is going to be warm. So this is my cool layer. When I draw this with uh, black, um, it's gonna be black here. It's gonna erase the, the cool layer and the, it'll reveal the warm underneath. And then what I'm gonna do is adjust those when I'm done. So I'm gonna scrub that. Only where the sunlight's hitting. And then what I like to do, uh, go in, adjust. I don't like them at 25%. I bring them down to about, I don't know, 13%. It's a little too dramatic. But uh, now we're just about done. And let's see, is there anything else? Technically you can go up and you can do, you know, just little quick things like auto tone, auto contrast doesn't matter. I usually like to save it as a PNG first and do that. And if, as long as it, you know, makes things pop a little more, you can do that. Uh, you can add other adjustment layers. You know, like sometimes I will add, um, I will add a brightness contrast filter. And by doing that, you can make it pop a little bit more. Sometimes I don't like doing that. It gives it kind of a harsh tone. The reason I choose the colors that I choose is I'm making it is so, it, I'm trying to do it right the first time without over adjusting. Um, I'm not really a fan of the brightness filter because I think it sometimes can kill the look of it. But I think we can call this done. Uh, we'd go ahead and sign it. <laughs> Why not? 
Uh, let's bring it down to about four pixels, eh, four pixels. And eh, three is fine. Bring it up and then we just <laughs> can't really see anything when it's white. Good Lord, that's, uh, that's pretty frightening. Yep, we'll just sign it. But anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, this is my first tutorial. You can check out more of my art at fxscreamer.deviantart.com. Um, yes, there are a lot of cats on it, but there is a reason for it. So I am creating uh, more than just images. So uh, feel free to check it out. Uh, I hope this tutorial was useful to you. Uh, thank you for hanging in there and dealing with my uh, ramblings <laughs> as we worked on this. So uh, thanks again. Subscribe if you want and uh, have a nice day. Thank you.